innovative reach uh, that we have all noticed online. It's a series of similar issues that are happening. So this is not limited to Microsoft by any means. It sadly probably happens every day. But when it happens to Microsoft um, and other companies of that size, um, who also have many security products, you know, Office 365, Azure, are obviously cloud computing, but they have a lot of security features. So this gives up a, a nice, not nice, uh, an unpleasant wake up call about what's actually going on and what attackers are really doing. So we'll go ahead and get started uh, with that right now. And a uh, little bit about Data Theorem. I'm almost gonna spend zero time on this slide, but we've been around for over two decades. A lot of startups, uh, a lot of security companies and a lot of books, a lot of research. If you're interested in hearing more about Data Theorem, contact us offline. But for today's call, we'll speak very little about ourselves. Now, this is our stack. Now, this is important to understand our research because our research kind of um, kind of goes right into our stack. We are a company designed to prevent AppSec data breaches. As you can see in mobile, web, API, and cloud, the keyword is data. Um, and the other keyword is breach. Um, so yes, you can be breached by your cloud. That's what we're going to talk about today, or your APIs, or your mobile and web app. So we are a full stack company um, to look at all layers of the environment for data breaches. And the reason why we did this is not to have a beautiful cake uh, graphic that you're seeing in front of you, or that we wanted to look uh, extremely technical. This is what's happening right now on the internet. This is what happened to Microsoft and a lot of other companies. Microsoft's Bing iOS app had a cloud resource embedded into it. That iOS app with the cloud resource was identified by a researcher, and that researcher found that cloud resource was open to the internet for anyone to see. So if you didn't have a full stack uh, product or a full stack kind of uh, philosophy in doing security testing, you would have missed this. If you only had a mobile scanner, you would have missed this. If you only had a cloud CSPM tool, you would have missed this, right? You got to put it all together. And why do you need to put it all together? Because that's what attackers do. Attackers don't just stop when the scope, quote unquote, is done. There is no scope. You go after data, you go quickly, you get it, and you get out, right? And that's what we saw today, or we saw in September with Microsoft. And the full stack approach is not something designed by data theorem. That's what our technology does, but it's what attackers do. And they've been doing it for 20 years, and we're trying to make it all together so customers are not forced to buy one, two, or three different technologies and put, string all those issues together to see where they're vulnerable. You want it in one, uh, one kind of uh, technology stack um, as attackers do the same. All right. So let's go uh, a little bit deeper in terms of what really happened with the Microsoft Bing iOS data loss. 6.5 terabytes of records were compromised in September. So here's the overview. Like I said earlier, it was the Bing iOS and the Bing Android apps publicly accessible on the App Store and Play Store. So those were the root cause of uh, the issues. And the resource, again, again, staying full stack, the resource was obviously on, on Azure, uh, obviously being a Microsoft app, and it was, an, uh, it was an Azure Elastic server that was essentially embedded in the Bing iOS app uh, for obvious reasons, right? You're, you have a client, the mobile app, um, it's uh, users are searching on that client, that search is being sent to the cloud Azure for processing. So it works normally, but on September 12th, which by the way, September 12th is a great day, but September 12th, and sadly for Microsoft, wasn't so great. Those, um, or the Elastic server uh, was basically open to the wide internet. So 6.5 terabytes of data for search, user location, device IDs, and a whole bunch of other information was readily available on the public internet starting on September 12th. Now the hacker, who identified this and responsibly disclosed it is right there, Atta. Um, so compliments to him for responsible disclosure. But sadly, we cannot rely on hackers uh, doing responsible disclosure. There is big money in the, the data that was identified. 
Uh, imagine if you knew everyone's search queries uh, and where they lived and what their phones uh, and their, their phone IDs. My gosh, that is so great data for anyone. Um, and for the attacker, they, they did the right thing. But someone doing this um, for malicious intentions, this is great data. Or a nation state wanting to get access to this data, again, very, very valuable. And the link to the article is right there on the register if you want to kind of look at that uh, later on. But this is essentially the high level of the details uh, around the attack. All right, so let's get so let's uh, let's start with a quote. So the server, the Elastic server on Azure was password protected until the first week of September. On September 12th, authentication was removed. So when we think of hacks, you know, we want this very sophisticated, very complex, very interesting story uh, that Hollywood thankfully has made famous for us. But again, as a, as a pen tester, as a researcher, um, as someone who's done interesting things on the internet, um, it's not always that interesting, but it, the amount of data you can get with simple attacks is a blessing for attackers. 6.5 terabytes of data with essentially just connecting. And I just want to be clear, they connected. They connected to a server and pulled data. Now, the reason why it's called a hack, because the person who connected to it was unauthorized. But if it was a legitimate person, it wouldn't have been a hack. So it's nothing very sophisticated um, in terms of the hack. What was sophisticated is how did they do that? How did they find this server? Yes, I understand data theorem that they connected and they got data, but how did they even know it was there? Like, you know, I, I don't understand that. And that's the cool part. That's the sophisticated part. And that is what attackers are doing today. So let's walk through that. So here is an example of how we detect hidden APIs, hidden cloud resources, or just unknown assets to your environment that are being used by your web applications and your mobile applications. So this is a technique that's commonly used by researchers and attackers to find assets, and it is complex. But once you find those assets, usually the data is right there wide open for you because no one else even knows, including the organization. Our organization as large and as sophisticated as Microsoft might not know it's there. So if you're an attacker, you prey on that. You prey on the unknown because your likelihood for success goes through the roof than something that we know has been pen tested for 1500 times like your, your website or, or something similar. So what an attacker will do is they're gonna take a mobile app. Um, in this case, we're just using Amazon as an example. They're a very uh, strong company as well. So uh, just a random example for brand name recognition. So they'll take Amazon from the app store and they'll decrypt it. Um, and so essentially here's a screenshot um, of the decryption. Um, I'm going to actually show a video file of this, so work with me here as I share uh, another piece of content. Uh, give me a second. And then, Ron, I'll ask you to be my QA. If you're not seeing what I'm speaking to, please interrupt me. Um, but essentially, um, here's a video uh, of our technology. I know it's very small font, so I hope you have your glasses on. Um, uh, and what we're doing here is we're taking the Amazon app from the app store and on the left side, we're decrypting it. Very common technique, uh, very easy technique so far, uh, but you can see when we decrypt it, we're able to get to all sorts of information from the mobile app. Now remind, and let me remind you, this is public information. Um, this is not anything that we got from internals of Amazon or Microsoft or anyone else. This is publicly accessible on the App Store and Play Store, and we're decrypting the app. And as you can see here, uh, we're seeing all sorts of interesting information embedded in the public mobile app. Um, so that's kind of step one in terms of what the attackers will be doing. Now, let me switch back to the uh, presentation. I'm going to go back and forth here a few times, so, um, so just bear with me. Okay, through step one. Now, step two 
is hunting. So you can hunt for cloud resources or APIs or anything in between. So we decompiled the application as it just showed, and now we're gonna hunt for resources. So again, I'm gonna show a video of that. Um, the screenshot shows it well, um, but essentially uh, I always like to show uh, the step-by-step um just so you know this is uh this is real stuff and not something that only uh, a few people on the internet can do this is this is a very common technique um that uh you know your moderately sophisticated attacker can do or even your entry level attacker so let me switch one second Okay, now we're going to, like, we've already uh, decompiled the application, so we got to essentially source code from the app, as you see here. Now, step two, um, as you can see here, we have an internal tool called API Hunter or Cloud Hunter, and we're going to look for cloud resources or APIs that are shown in light green, lime green, if you will, um, from the Amazon app. Um, so we've decompiled it, so we got to source, and now we're looking for cloud resources and cloud APIs. Now, this is the important step. As I said before, how did the researcher find the APIs? It's not something that you can find easily. They're hidden, they're embedded, but this is one of many techniques they can do. And now that we have this, as an attacker, you have your attack surface. You have a, have a list of cloud resources and APIs that are essentially embedded in the mobile app or your web apps for now you to connect to, and if you're lucky, the connection will be easy because the data is sitting there wide open on the internet. If you're not lucky, you might have to do some more sophisticated um, attack, uh, attacks, but essentially um, it should be there readily available. All right, so step three. So the this is not something I don't think the uh, attackers did in the Microsoft case, but we see this a lot. So what will happen for the very sophisticated, uh, very efficient attacker is what they're going to do is um, download every version of your mobile app or scan your web app on a daily basis, and then they'll do a diff and they'll look for shadow APIs or shadow assets. So anything that wasn't there the day before, there's a strong likelihood that security doesn't know about those items either. And if you can connect to those new resources, new cloud resources, before security finds out, you might have 6.5 terabytes of data for you to compromise uh, with almost no technical effort. So this technique, I don't know for sure if it was used by the researcher, but this is a common technique um, because they know organizations are big and they know one hand is not talking to the other. So why not try to do a diff between releases or daily and anything new, there's a good chance that it slipped through the cracks and no one knew about it, unless you're looking from the outside in on a daily basis. So that's the next step here. And you can see here, um, I won't go through the video, but essentially you can see here all the new APIs and cloud assets we have enumerated from the Amazon app uh, back when we did this demo. Now, again, nothing wrong here. Like Amazon, of course, releases new code. So, so what did we see? We just new APIs and their new cloud asset. There is no security issue here. We are just following their tracks step by step, right? But if you're Amazon or Microsoft or Google or whatever, of course we do this, everyone does this. The problem is, is did the security team know that, and this is a fake example, but know that, hey, m.media-amazon is brand new and open on the internet. And if it did, uh, if it did not, is there anything sensitive there? And that's what happened to Microsoft. Um, and so, so finally, like I said earlier, now that you know the new assets, all you have to do is connect. Connect to the APIs, connect to the um, uh, cloud resources. So in our example, um, I'll go ahead and show that. So we're going to do uh, a connection. So now here we're connecting to the APIs and you can see the ones that are in red are things that we can't connect to. So for the attacker, we're just going to blow them off um, unless we're targeting you, but many attackers are just doing flyby attacks, seeing what hits. 
And then for the in green, we got a status 200 okay. So they're open. So then what we'll do here after they're open, finally, is uh, our favorite step for the attacker is um, extract data. So, we, um, so again, this is obviously an example, but as we're connecting, um, you can see they're way at the bottom. Um, this is an example, this is not real data, but you can see in our test environment, we have first name, last name, username, password, password, social security number. In the Microsoft example, they had search queries, they had device IDs, they had location, but the same attack method that the researcher used for Microsoft is what we're showing here. Just connect to the data. You have 200 response, connect to the data um, and see what data you get back from the environment. In this case, they got lucky. The reason why I'm hesitating, it depends on the perspective you're, you're looking at, um, but they got lucky and they found a lot of good data by just by connecting. And as again, how do they get that? How do they connect is again, step one, here's the recap. Find the target, mobile app or web app. Decrypt it, decompile it, um, not too hard because it's all publicly accessible. Then look for the APIs, look for the cloud resources. Then you have a long list of cloud resources. And then step three is connect, right? So the hard part is the reconnaissance part, but a good attacker, a good disciplined attacker knows the importance of that. He or she, I mean, there's nation states that spend three years on reconnaissance because they know the value of it. And then when they have their targets, they just connect left and right when they uh, when they need to. So while the attack was straightforward connecting, the reconnaissance was the uh, was the gold mine essentially because they had a lot of targets um, to essentially connect to. And how they did that was probably decompile web app, web apps or mobile apps to find a long list of the cloud resources. Um, in the cloud APIs, because if I want to attack Microsoft, I can't just find its cloud resource by searching the Internet. Like I can go to Microsoft.com and that's a web app, but the cloud, the Azure resources, that's not just something you can just find like in a, in a phone book style. You have to go hunt for it. You have to go find it. And there's a lot of creative ways, including the one we showed you that attackers do. And when they find that, more likely they might be the first people who know it's there. Even the internal teams might not know it exists. All right, so so what's the solution? How do you solve this problem? Um, it's it's a uh, it's very standard, very boring, which is why I'm chuckling. Um, it's not very sophisticated, but it's asset inventory. Like, do you know where your APIs are? Do you know where your cloud resources are? In Microsoft's case, probably and. It probably did. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Again, I'm going to loop back. But if you're not doing asset inventory on a daily basis, not your script, not what the developer told you, not, you know, it's like, do you have a technical analysis of your inventory? And if you do, are you testing them to make sure the state is correct? I want you to step back a little bit if you if you can, if you've been in security for a while to layer three. Like layer three port scanning is like, hey, we own a, a partial class C um, and, and we have all these resources. You would do a daily port scan and you would see, wait, why do we have NFS open? Why do we have RSH open? Why do we have Telnet open? And if you do, you shut it down. Same idea is for your cloud resources. Why are these things there and why are they publicly accessible? So the first half of the slide is the solution inventory. I know it's boring. I know it's not what you usually think about security, but it's a big part of what the current problem is today. And then when you have those resources, inspect them. Inspect them for authentication, inspect them from authorization, and inspect them in encryption. Remember that quote I showed you in the first slide? Authentication was enabled on this Elastic server. It was enabled, but it then became disabled. On September 12th, it became disabled. Someone at Microsoft should have known that. And if you have inventory, which I'm sure they do, I'm positive they do, and also inspecting it, they would have caught this before the attackers do.